Thank you for joining us today for the worship service at Calvary Road Baptist Church. Our desire is to equip believers to become fully devoted followers of Christ. Calvary Road has a dynamic ministry committed to worshiping God, loving others, serving others, and inviting others. Let's worship together. deserving of our thanks this morning and we've got a great God worthy to be praised and adored and uh, that's why we're here today hope you didn't come to see each other because that's going to be a letdown but uh, if you've come to see the Lord and lift him up we'll all leave here better amen it'll feel better this is his house this is his time we are his people so welcome and if you're visiting today and this is your very first time just make yourself at home because it's his house. This doesn't belong to us. This is his. But if you are here for the first time, we sure would love to know that uh, this is your first time. Our ushers have a card that they'd love to place in your hands. Would you just lift your hand up this morning and say, I am here for the very first time at Calvary Road. And uh, thank you so much. Our guys will get to you just as quick as they can. So keep your hands up until they see you. And uh, fill the card out. We'd greatly appreciate it. Place that card in the offering bucket when it comes by. Right back here. They're coming to you. Hey, Calvary Road, would we just welcome these first-time visitors with us today, please? <laughs> Amen. This is your second time when welcome back. Uh, if you're a member here, then uh, thanks for showing up. Amen. 
We always appreciate that. So it's just good to be in the house of the Lord, and we welcome you. A couple of announcements I want to get through here, just a few. If you ordered a T-shirt for Operation Christmas Child to help raise money uh, to send all of those boxes this year, uh, your T-shirt is here. You can pick it up out in the lobby right after church. Our Faith Promise Sunday, that's for our missions. That's coming next Sunday. And uh, we want you to be much in prayer about what can I give uh, on a monthly basis to missions. And if you want to give yearly, you certainly can do that. But those Faith Promise cards are on the resource tables as you go out. And uh, we'd love to get those in your hand. Make sure you grab one. Next Sunday, if you haven't picked it up, maybe you forget our ushers will be prepared. We'll hand them out uh, when, you're, when you're ready. There's boxes up here. Uh, you'll march around. We're going to have a special time during the service that you'll just come forward and say, here's what God wants me and my family to do for missions and place those in the box. Now, just to give you an indicator, this last uh, Wednesday night, we voted on a couple of things that missions is helping. One, we send $5,000 to a... Uh, a man we dearly love in Haiti to help continue to build his orphanage over there. Uh, he has 70 kids in his house right now. 70 kids, he and his wife. And I don't know if you realize this, but when the earthquakes and those uh, hurricanes have come through there and decimated that country, uh, it killed many of the parents. And he's gone out and these little kids are just wandering the street. They don't have a home to go to. They don't have a parent to go back to. And Brother Casimir has been taking them in his house. He's got 70. Can you imagine? But he's building an orphanage with God's people helping him. And uh, we sent that love offering this Wednesday and mailed that to him to help him as he is trying to build that orphanage. And then also, uh, we voted Wednesday night that we are going to go on the radio, a ministry here through the church, continue that ministry. So we'll be on uh, the radio 101.7 FM that's out of Kent. Uh, now that doesn't give you excuse. We're going to be on from the 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock hour on Sunday mornings. Uh, and you won't know what message that's going to be. It's not going to be the same as here. So uh, you'll, when I give a pop quiz on what I preached on Sunday, you can't say I just stayed home listening to the radio. But we'll also be on on Tuesday mornings, a 30 minute time slot on Tuesdays. And uh, I'm not sure of that time. It's somewhere 10 to 10.30 or it's 10.30 to 11. So won't it be neat? You can listen to Hank Williams Jr., then me, and then Merle Haggard. <laughs> won't that be interesting? So, uh, but we've decided to get the gospel out as much as possible and, uh, and try our best to reach this county for the Lord Jesus. So those opportunities have opened up for us, and uh, that's by your giving. Thank you so much by your giving. So we're going all over the world. You pray about what you can give. That'll be next Sunday. Coats for the city. Uh, we're still taking up coats. The last number he gave me, we were up to 270 coats between this church and Dutch Cove. And uh, the goal is 500 coats. 500 coats. I talked to a man the other day and said his wife had that many in her closet. <laughs> 500 coats. Uh, so if we could, if you've not brought your coat, you still have tonight, you still have Wednesday, you still have next Sunday morning, we'll be sending a message out to remind you. Uh, those coats will be taken door to door along with a video on the gospel and the Lord Jesus and a testimony and witness to each individual. They'll be proclaiming Jesus to every soul they give a coat to. So you bring your coat of all sizes, doesn't matter. Children need them, the adults need them, you bring them. Don't forget our trunk or treat event on Halloween night here. That's a Wednesday night, the 31st, and uh, we're going to have a great time up here. Bonfire, kids running everywhere, hopefully not in the bonfire, but uh, we're going to have some food and just have a great time. Trunks, we need all the trunks we can get decorated up and uh, see Michelle or see one of the ladies that work with the kids. Uh, why don't all the ladies that work with the kids stand up so they know who they're going to see? Michelle, where are the rest of them? There's Kelly. I don't know if Emily's not, Emily's not here, but they're, you, you see, see some of these, please, and say, uh, I want to help. We greatly appreciate it. 
And then if you'll notice in the bulletin, the uh, marriage retreat is coming up uh, in March, but we always need you to get signed up as quickly as possible. So you make sure you get signed up when you see that. And uh, everybody point to the direction that you sign up in. <laughs> I got a guy out here like this. He's paid attention. Very good. Right over here where Elijah's standing at the door. Uh, you want to go out the door that Elijah's at. And uh, so you make sure you go over there. That's not his real name, but that's who I always picture when I think of Elijah. Uh, but you go through the door. Brother Jim will help you. You sign up out there at the table. All right, let's all stand this morning. It's time to release the We Worship kids. And uh, they're headed to We Worship. We're getting ready to sing. So uh, if you're new and you don't know which way to go, ask a neighbor. But follow some of our workers. They'll take you to We Worship. And then remain standing as we sing. Let us sing. We have heard the joyful sound. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Spread the tide. Play, you turn around and greet each other this morning. This morning, isn't it? That Jesus does indeed save. And if you've trusted in Him as Savior and Lord, you do not have to worry about the end of this life. Uh, you'll just take your last breath here and step into eternity with Him. And uh, we're so very thankful for all of the love and support and encouragement that you have poured out to our family in the, in the, in, in the days gone by. Uh, my grandmother did, in fact, go home to be with the Lord. We had our funeral service yesterday. And uh, I am grateful to God for my godly heritage, how she loved the Lord and lived for Him. And uh, I appreciate so very much the phone calls, the texts, the visits, the food. Uh, it's just been amazing to see that, and I appreciate that so very much. And now we have the privilege this morning of going to our Heavenly Father in a word of prayer. So will you join me? Father, thank you for loving us the way you do. And Father, I thank you for your grace and mercy in my life and in the life of this church. And Father, I thank you for your blessing. Uh, each day that we are permitted to wake up and to face this world for you and for the cause of Christ is a blessing indeed. And I pray, God, that we'd see it that way. I pray, God, that our, our vision would not become so limited, but, God, that our vision would be focused upon you and what you're doing in our midst. Father, thank you for the privilege to be able to give this morning. And I pray that as we have an opportunity to do so, that we would do so with heaven in mind, the purpose of taking the gospel to the ends of the earth. So, Father, thank you for allowing us the privilege to be on mission with you. Thank you for a church that sees the importance of giving to missions so that the gospel can be preached throughout all the earth. Thank you for loving us like you do. Thank you for allowing us to be here today to worship you in spirit and truth. We love you. Thank you for loving us. We pray all of this in Christ's name and for his sake. Amen.
if you would take your Bibles and be turning to the book of 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 1. I'm going to give you this morning a Christmas gift early. This will be the shortest message you've ever heard me preach. There's one amen already. And uh, because I, I think it just gets to the point. I really struggled all week. I have a couple of different series that I'm working on and uh, thought I might start one this morning, but uh, the Lord's kind of shifted our direction to another direction. And uh, I want to I give you a thought this morning and hopefully that each one of us will take home with us today. And I pray that if you are a person today in this building who has been saved, and I mean you know what that means, you've given your heart to the Lord Jesus, you're not doubting any section of it, you know that if you died today, it is well with your soul. I'm talking about that kind of salvation. And I was thinking, if I was a lost man, and I was coming into Calvary Road this morning, and I was going to watch people's faces to try to pick out who I believed had the real thing, the genuine product. So I was scanning the audience and scanning the choir and scanning us while we sang. It's kind of odd to me that uh, we sung the song, Jesus Saves. But I'd hate to play it back to you how you sung it. I leaned over and told Mark, I said, listen to how we are singing, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. I believe this morning if we, right before we sung that song, if we as an audience were given a 10 second shot of hell, and then we were asked to sing, Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Would it come out any differently? I've thought about it as I have experienced in my family uh, the last little while, a couple of deaths. Thought about it as I was visiting with Mark's grandmother the other day, and you could tell it was close. I think about those in this building right now that are experiencing grief. Uh, you've had a loved one pass this week. I'm uh, thinking of you right now as I make this statement. Those of you that have been through it know, many of us have, standing next to the bedside of a loved one as they are passing, I am not and was not thinking about well, what inheritance would I get? I was not thinking about uh, his exploits as an electrician. I stood by his bed, and knowing that the last breath was coming, the greatest hope, the greatest joy that I could find in that moment was knowing he's saved, he's okay. Now, I don't know about you this morning, but I'm glad I'm saved. But I don't always show it right. Do you? And I'm not asking you to do cartwheels. But I don't, I don't believe, I believe smiling is okay. I, I believe having a little joy in you every now and then is okay, right? I mean, we are in God's house. If, is that correct? We're in God's house. So you're not going to get called back to a room and get a root canal in a minute. <laughs> far as I know, this is church. Uh, you're not having to deal with them co-workers that's driving you crazy. Right? See, the thing about church, it's an interesting place. You won't even fight in church with your loved one 
You wait till you get out in the car. Or you fall all the way here. But then we put on a little grin and we come in the house of God. So at least it's peaceful for right now. I'm not saying you can't fight in church because Baptists will. That's the truth. It's happened. But, but I reckon we're here today because at some point in our life, somebody told us about the Lord Jesus and he convicted us of our sin and we gave our hearts to him. And I don't blame people for being sad in church or dead in church if they don't know who he is. I don't blame people for not being excited about church if they're never going to hear a message that uh, is a message of your bonds being broken, your chains being torn apart, and the Lord setting you free and delivering you from a devil's hell for all of eternity. I, I mean, if all I was going to hear today is how to be a better neighbor or 10 ways that I can lose weight and feel good about it or how I can come in and, and, and feel good about uh, my job or, or how he has the best life for me now, Th that'd be sad. But I'm coming in here today to tell you that no matter how bad this world gets, no matter how dark it gets, there's one thing that can't be taken from me, and that is the day that I gave my heart to the Lord Jesus. And I'm glad I'm saved. And I, I know some of you have heard me preach this before. It's been a while. Some of you are new to us and you've never heard this before. And I'm not a stranger to running a rerun because I feel real sure that even if you have heard it, you don't remember it. But even if God put it on our heart, it should be something that we ought to call out. So in the briefest message that John Songer's ever preached to you, your early Christmas present, because they'll all be an hour and a half long from this point forward. <laughs> I want to preach this. I'm glad I'm saved. First Peter chapter 1. Would you stand with me in reverence to God's holy, infallible, inerrant word? Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. This is a man that is pinning down a letter to a group of people who is suffering immensely. He says to the strangers scattered throughout Pontius, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. I don't want to get too deep, but somebody's inevitably reading this with me saying, I wish he'd touch on that whole election thing. I wish he'd explain this whole election thing. I was raised on Hot Creek, and, and I have a, a mountain education that I'm proud of. I can read and write. Uh, and as some people wonder about mountain people, I've had shoes my whole life. Some think we never had a pair of shoes, but I have. I've been blessed enough to have shoes, and here's what I want you to know today. It doesn't matter what line you fall on. You can say, well, I'm a Calvinist, and you can say, well, I'm not a Calvinist, but here's what I want every one of you to know today. Whether you're a Calvinist or not, none of you know who the elect are. You want to know how I know that? Because you're not God. But here's what I do know today. God does know who's going to get saved. God already knows who's going, listen to this, to choose him. Now, it is our job, since we don't know who the elect are, God has told us to go nominate everybody. Our job is to go into all the world and tell them about Jesus. And those that are going to say yes to Jesus, God already knows, because God knows everything. That's why it says the elect according to the foreknowledge. He already knows. You won't pull anything on God. You can't walk down the aisle today and get saved and God say, wait a second, I didn't know that one was coming. I had no idea that was going to get saved. He does know. And so right now I stand back and say, I don't know who the elect are, but one day I'll guarantee you when I look around heaven, I'll see all the elect and God knew who was going to come. But listen, I believe that God allows us to choose him because love is a choice. Love is a choice. You're not a robot. You're not going to be forced to love him. He wants those to love him who choose that love. Now, there you go. 
There's your message on election. Verse 3, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So what did I get when I got saved? Watch this. According to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope. Church, say those two words, lively hope. Say them, lively hope. Say it again, Baptist. Lively hope. One more time. Lively hope. Lively. <laughs> a lively hope. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, we're, it, it's, it's a living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. From the dead. He's out of the grave. You don't have to hold that amen until Easter. <laughs> you can let it out if you want to. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away. Watch this, reserved in heaven for you. I hadn't had many reservations in my life, but I've got one. Now watch verse 5. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Wherein you, what's that next word? Greatly what? Should we sing Jesus saves again? Wherein you greatly rejoice. You've got a lively hope and you ought to greatly rejoice. Though now, watch, for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations or trials. That the trial of your faith be much more precious than of gold that perish, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you love. Amen. Not seen him, but do anybody in here today, would you raise your hand if you love Jesus? Don't do it because I'm asking you. If you love Jesus, just wave at him and tell him you love him. He's all right with that. He, he's good because here's what it says. Uh, you've not seen him, but you love him. Isn't that interesting? Whom though now you see him not yet believing. Here it is again. Can you believe this? You rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Hey, if you're happy and you know it, tell your face. <laughs> not just clap your hands, but... I'm asking you, if I'm going to preach short, you're going to smile through it. <laughs> Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Lord, thank you for our salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. You know what I've discovered? Christians are different. We once was lost, but now are found. We were once bound for hell, but now we're bound for heaven. Our destination's changed. We are citizens of heaven traveling through this world. I'm glad this world is not my home. It would be a depressing place. What makes us act differently? What makes us react differently? Though we have now been saved, we found this. We have found a new reason for living. We have discovered answers that set us apart. Why do Christians have a different view of life? I am glad I'm saved. And the first reason I'm glad I'm saved, and Peter wrote about it here, I'm glad I'm saved because my treasures are eternal. My treasures are eternal. Did you know everything you have down here is going to rust or fade away? You know, it, this, is, this is a troubling thought, but some of you working hard around your house and you have beautiful homes and, and I try to work around mine. I like to keep the yard mowed and I, I've just got OCD problems so I do that and, and I like to work around and, and look back and see the flowers and you put your hands to work and you watch that and then you realize as you're getting older, I'm going to leave this. This isn't going with me. I'm not taking this with me. I've worked so hard on all of this, and one day I'm going to die. And you know what? I'm going to die, and I don't know if the next guy that Michelle marries is going to take care of this like I'm taking care of it. I wonder if he'll change the oil in my lawnmower. I wonder. He, he probably won't even cut the grass. It, he'll probably just let it get waist high. And I think about Michelle and Steve and the joy they're having up there in that house. 
I think about what I'm going to leave behind and, and all of those things. I've been down in the barn, and uh, my daddy loved his barn. Now, there's no doubt about daddy loving his barn. One thing I found about my daddy, he's a pack rat. Dad was a pack rat. He, he kept everything. I'm not kidding. He kept everything. And I've spent days down there uh, going through stuff and, and sending stuff off and broken things. And, uh, and you say, why would you get rid of that? Well, Dad knew how to use that stuff. <laughs> I don't have any use for it. Um, Dad was an electrician. He had stuff and, elect and, and, and I mean old broken pipe and little pieces of old broken pipe that he'd just bring in and think, well, I'll throw that in the barn. Threw a lot in the barn. I mean, he threw a lot in the barn. I went down there and I was looking at that barn. Daddy loved that barn. Uh, one of the reasons he loved that old barn is because Papa had it built, his daddy. And him and his daddy spent a lot of time down in that barn, a lot of little pigs that they had. My Papa had hogs for a long time. And Daddy would tell me stories about sitting down there and watching all those little piglets being born. He could tell you where he was sitting. He had sat up all night waiting on Mama to give birth to all them little piglets. He, he would say, I sit right here. And he had, a, he had a deep affection for that barn. But I was looking at the cracks in that barn, and I was looking at the foundation and thinking, boy, it's not long until this old barn may not hold up under me anymore heavy snows. I, I don't know how long it's going to stand. And if you drive around Haywood County or in the south anywhere, you can look off in the distant fields and you can see old barns that once stood majestic and beautiful and they're leaning to one side and some of the foundations give way and men that treasured those things and built those things, they are not eternal. The Bible tells us that what we have down here is going to fade away. Did you know what you drove in today? No matter how much you paid for it or how high the payments are, it's going to rust. Did you know that? It's going to fade away. The reason I know that is some of you have drove in today in some things that are fading away. <laughs> I've seen that. Seen it firsthand. You drive around this county and you see somebody that, that inevitably has the sides of their bed, of their truck, it's held together with, with the string that holds hay together. Uh, you see bungee cords holding the back up. Seen one the other day, he had bungee cord the bumper on, the entire bumper, just so it doesn't fall off. These things are going to fade. The old home place you grow up in, it's going to fade. I think of those that I can sit, and, and, and the other day I was mowing out in the field in front of the house, and I was thinking, and I said, there's a house that wasn't here, and there's a house that wasn't here, and there's a house that's been built, and just in my eyesight, I was looking that from the time I was a boy until now, all that's been added, but I've also noticed what also has disappeared. Some of the old home places that we would visit, the porches we had sat on, uh, the kitchens we would eat a meal in. I mean, cathead biscuits would be brought out and, and, and you would sit at those tables and remember just being a little boy, well, they're gone. And, and, and they, they're fading away and they rusted away. And I'm telling you, if this world is all we've got, then that's a depressing thought that it won't last. Amen? How many of you figured out this morning when you tried to get up, your body's not going to last? How many of you rolled out of bed instead of got out of bed? Right? How many of you took a, a mess of pills just to get here? <laughs> you, don't have to, you don't have to confess. I'm just asking you. That's just part of life. It's part of life. We are fading away. You don't look as good as you used to. You're not as fit as you was. I love to look at these young guys walking around with washboard abs and hair on their head. And, and they're walking around, man, and they're firm. And they want you to know they're firm because they wear T-shirts from Baby Gap. And they, <laughs> they, 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 they strut around like, look at me, look at me. I've got a body and look at you. But I want you to know that as you look at some of us, we once had your body. I once had those abs. I tell Hayden that. He comes through the house and I'll slap his stomach and I say, my stomach used to feel like that. My, my stomach did. Now I catch crumbs in the crack, you know, when I'm sitting down. <laughs> and our little dog, we've got a little pomawawa. <laughs> and Sophie jumps up there and gets the crumbs out of the crack, you know. 
I, you say that's disgusting, but I'm happily married. I'm good. <laughs> Some of you out there running, you're lifting weights, and the, the Bible says for bodily exercise profit a little. I love that verse. I'm not sure if I'm taking it out of context or not, but <laughs> it sounds good to me. I realize these bodies don't hold up. Your eyesight fades, your hearing fades, your home's fading away, vehicles you're driving, old tractors that a man used to be proud of, it's just a rust bucket out in the yard. Things that we treasure now are going to be somebody's junk down the road. But I'm telling you what we've got waiting on us on the other side, it's eternal. And I'm getting a new body that's going to last forever and never fade away. I'm going to get eyes that never dim. I'm glad I'm saved. Are you glad you're saved? I'm going to step into a lamb that the filthy hands of sin have never touched. And I'm going to be so glad to stand there one day and think, everything I see is not going anywhere. It's going to look just like this a million years from now. And I'm going to look at my daddy and never see him ever again with a diseased body. I'm never going to see him fading away in front of my eyes. I'm never going to witness him take his final breath again. I'm telling you today, I'm glad I'm saved. God has given me something that the world cannot give me. I'm glad I'm saved because my treasures are eternal. The peace of God, the grace of God, the sweet spirit of God. I've got a living, lively hope. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And you, if you've been saved today in this building, you have a living hope. And I'm telling you, the greatest thing in the world is to know you're saved. Amen. To know that it is all right between you and the Master. And we ought to be thankful for that. And every time we come in his house, no matter how bad we're hurting or what we're going through, we ought to reach down in that bucket and we can always bring that up saying, I don't care how discouraged I am. I don't care how down I am right now. It doesn't change the fact that I belong to the king. I have been saved and I am sealed till the day of redemption. My treasures are eternal. But you know what I'm also glad of? I'm glad Peter wrote about this. Not only are my treasures eternal, but my troubles are temporary. Amen. Amen. How many of you got troubles this morning? Trouble, 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 trouble. Hey, that's how you come to church. You're like the donkey with Winnie the Pooh. Always got your head down. Good morning. Good morning. You always feeling... Feeling like the world's coming down on you. There's a big black cloud over you all the time. I'm telling you, I'm just I'm giving you a definition myself. That's how I get sometimes. I get Eeyore disease. Go through troubles. I've watched some of you, you carry it along too, like a big old backpack of burden. We walk around, and, and I'm not saying you don't have troubles, because I bet some of us do. I bet there's financial trouble in the building. I bet there's marital trouble in the building. Lord have mercy, if you're raising a teenager today, you have troubles. Say amen. amen. Some of you are saying, well, I'm glad mine are young. <laughs> you know they got to grow up, don't you? And that sweet little child that wraps around your leg and just loves on you and says, I love you, mommy's going to slam the door one day and they're going to smell bad, look bad, feel bad, scream, holler. And then you're going to lay awake at night and stare at the ceilings thinking, what am I going to do? Can I kill them? <laughs> well, my mom and dad has a little thing they've had in their house, and a little old plaque over on the bookcase, and it says, grandkids are reward for not killing your kids. <laughs> I always thought that made sense. We got troubles. America, we got troubles. We can walk in the building today, and, and I'm sure we brought troubles with us. We have work troubles and worries and anxieties. We've got troubles in our body. We have troubles in our finances. But I'm telling you something, what I've discovered is most of these troubles, they don't last forever. And one thing that I'm real sure of, because I'm saved, one day I'm leaving trouble behind. One day, I, I can't imagine what it's going to be like to wake up one morning and not have any trouble. And when we get to heaven, we're going to walk around and you're going to be like, something's missing. What's missing? I, I, I feel like I've forgotten something. Oh, yeah, I have. All my troubles. <laughs> They're all behind. 
I don't have a bill in the box waiting on me. I don't have an unruly person at the house. I don't have somebody mad at me around the corner. I don't have somebody running me down on Facebook. I don't have a co-worker that's making me mad. I don't have any of those issues dealing with me. I am so thankful that I know that my troubles are going to be left behind. One day, guys, I'm telling you, the skies are going to part and our troubles are going to go away. Troubles are temporary. I promise you this. It's a joy. I know that as you get older, and, and uh, I'm 45 now, and, and some of you are looking at me that are 80 and 85 and 90 saying, oh, he's so young, and you grin, and uh, that makes me feel good. Keep grinning. Keep grinning. But I'll tell you this. I've realized that, uh, that the farther you go in this and you start watching hurt and you watch your families get older, you start having to give up some of your family and, and watch them cross on over. I'm telling you, I'm so thankful. And the more that that goes and the more I stand up as a pastor and I take some of you down to the cemetery and we bury your body as you're already gone and the hurt that comes in there. I was sitting down there watching the choir sing thinking, man, I'm telling you, you just blink your eyes and one or two are gone and another one is gone and all those years you spent seems like just a vapor it is here and then it is gone well blessed be the name of the Lord because we're saved there's coming a day that no more trouble will ever come our way listen to the way Peter wrote about it he said though now for a season if need be you're going through some trials it's just seasonal it's just seasonal it's like winter to me I hate winter I hope some of you Florida people put me in your trunk. But, but if you put me in your trunk, remember I'm claustrophobic, so please give me a lot of medication. I, I've just thought about if uh, down the road, is it possible that we could have, you know, a church down there for January, February, and March, and then we can all come back up here in April, and I just think that'd be grand. I don't like cold weather. I've got some people applauding that. All in favor, say amen. 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 So I know a few of you were coming to live with. <laughs> but I think about it, man. You look out there and the leaves are all gone. It seems like death everywhere. And you just look out and it's cold and you got to wrap up to do anything and you're chilled to the bone. And, and it's just heavy. It can get heavy. The days are short. Uh, you come in and, and you wait for five hours just to go to bed. I mean, it's been dark that long. You know how that feels? The time changes. And, and it just starts weighing on you. Some of you, you say, well, I love winter. I'm a winter person. Well, go north. <laughs> Quit telling me how much you love winter. Get out, man. I don't want to hear it. You say, well, I'm just a positive person. Well, be positive to somebody else. You think I'm mad now? Wait till January. But the fact of the matter is, it's a season. Peter writes the word season. You know what? The only thing that gets us through winter is we keep flipping one more day over in the calendar. And, and I watch y'all. I know how y'all are because you're like me. We get to March and it's still cold, but we got hope, right? Days are getting a little bit longer. And every now and then you'll see one of them little old lilies pop its head up out of the ground and, and it'll, it'll let you know you're going to live, <laughs> The choir sung, we're going to make it. We need to sing that every Sunday in wintertime. <laughs> we're, uh, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. That's how it feels seasonally, man. But I'm telling you what God wants you to know today. You look around and sin is building up and it's increasing on every hand. You look around and wickedness in our society is growing. The drug problem is completely out of hand. Families are completely busted up. Kids don't know which way to go. We are a sinful nation. We are seeing things that 15 years ago we never dreamed we'd see in the United States of America. But I want you to know, saved people, it's a season. And one day we're going to step into a land that there is no more voting on anything because the King of kings and the Lord of lords is going to rule and reign. He's going to say this is how it's going to be, and we're going to be thankful it's going to be that way. I'm glad that my troubles are temporary. Amen. It's not going to last. My troubles are temporary. And then I want to close with this. That I found out by being saved that my trials have a purpose. Everything I go through has a purpose. Isn't that great? 
Do you know God doesn't waste anything? He doesn't waste anything. So everything I go through has a purpose. So some of you at Calvary Road, you know this. Act like you've never heard it before. If you've been with me all these years, you know this. But your neighbor next to you may not have a clue. So just act like you never heard it. Years ago, I was sitting listening to a message. The man said something that I discovered I had lived through. I want to share it with you. I hate, with everything in me, every fiber of my being, I hate buttermilk. I hate it. I'm telling you, if you've ever opened it and smelled of it, some of you say, oh, I love it, but listen, not everybody can be saved. Uh, <laughs> not everybody's got it right. I personally hate buttermilk. So one day, I'm just bebopping through the house, and my mama, she makes some tremendous biscuits. My mama's a biscuit maker. And I'm just running through the house, and I catch my mama dumping buttermilk <laughs> into the pot. And you know how it is. You're just running through the house, and I went sliding through in my socks, and I seen that. And I thought, you wicked woman. <laughs> and I said, whoa, 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 what are you doing? And she laughed. I remember laughing, saying, John, I've always put buttermilk in the biscuits. That was a hard moment for me <laughs> because I had to decide whether I was ever going to eat a biscuit again. I had to make a decision right then, right there. I've always loved these biscuits, but the reason is she never told me what went in them. Today, I just happened to notice what went in them. And she would mix all that biscuit mix together and, you know, pat them all out, get her little biscuit cutter out. She'd start laying them out and then slide them into the oven. She'd put them into the heat. A few minutes later, those things come sliding out, little browned on top. She's cutting up fresh tomatoes. We've just got corn out of the garden. That corn's fresh cut off. And I'm telling you, that was the meal. It was biscuits with tomatoes and cut off corn. And if you've got any education at all, you cut that biscuit open and you put that corn on that biscuit. I've got a Yankee or two out there looking at me right now like, <laughs> what in the world? And let me, tell you, let me tell you, my northern friend, what else we had? Sweet tea. <laughs> and I'm telling you, that'll, that'll take you to glory. <laughs> it gave me diabetes. <laughs> so before the biscuits ever come out, I had to make a decision. I guess either I don't eat or I'm against it because there's buttermilk in it. But I found out that just like in life, you know, that's what God does to us. Our life is a mixing bowl. Every now and then, God pours an ingredient in that I don't care much for. I don't like that ingredient. By itself, it is ridiculous. Buttermilk by itself, I'm telling you, you, you really got to pray about that. You need to think about drinking clabbered milk. It's not healthy. But but I, I, I would just look at that and, and the flour, you take everything and you separate the ingredients out. I'm not going to sit there and eat that by itself. I'm not going to drink that buttermilk, but you mix it all up together and you slide it into the heat of an oven and you let the heat get on it for a little while. The trial, that's the heat. That's what we go through. That's some of the intense trials that we go through. God puts a little heat on us. And then he slides us out of the oven because you know what God's intent for you is? He wants you to be the best biscuit that you can be. Amen. And one thing I know about being saved is I know this. God's not out to hurt me. God's not out to destroy me. God loves me. You know what God wants for John Swanger? He knows ahead of time what ingredient he's going to have to add. 
And I'm telling you, I believe it pains him to have to do so. But he's like, I know this. I can't have John be the final product that I want John to be unless John walks through this. Unless John goes through this. So I'm going to add this, and then I'm going to put him in the heat. I'm going to add this, then I'm going to put him in the heat. And I'm telling you what I pray is, is that when I draw my final breath on this earth, is that I have come out of that oven being the absolute best biscuit that I can be for the Lord Jesus with the buttermilk and all that he added to my life. I know this, that my trials have a purpose. Everything I go through, he can work it together for good because I love him and I'm called according to his purpose. And when you're saved, you know this. He's not harming me. He's helping me. Let's stand our feet today. Every head is bowed. Every eye is closed. I am glad I'm saved. How about you? How about you? You know, I want you to just bow your head in here while I read to you a phrase or two again from the, from, from the writing of Peter. You have a lively hope. Are you glad you're saved? God's good with that. He's good with you saying from the depths of your soul, I'm glad I'm saved. A lively hope. You know what that lively hope is? Our Lord and Savior was resurrected from the dead. And I know this. If he can defeat the, de the grave, he can get me through whatever I'm going to face. And when death comes my way one day, because of the resurrection of the Savior, I'll be taken home to be with him. Folks, listen to me. There's a great resurrection day coming for all of us and all our loved ones. You know what else I've determined? I looked in this and Peter said, I'm telling you, you are headed to an inheritance that is incorruptible. It's not going to fade away. Some of us have had to watch some of our loved ones fade away. Some of us realize today that our bodies are doing the very same thing. We're not what we used to be. This body's fading away. This building will fade away. Our homes and our cars will fade away. But we're going to a land to an inheritance that is incorruptible. It's undefiled. Sin has never touched it. Our treasures are eternal. And you know what? Because we're saved, our troubles, our troubles are temporary. So you're in a storm right now. I'm sorry. I, I get it. I get it. I am sorry. But I want you to think of it this way, too. It could just be a dose of buttermilk. And I want you to realize that what you're going through, if you'll give that to the master, he's going to put it into the heat, and he's going to make a great product out of you. Jesus knows where you're at this morning. He knows exactly what you're going through. He knows exactly, too, what the end product needs to be. So you can trust him today. Because every trial you go through has a purpose. He loves you. Well, today I've talked a lot about being thankful that I'm saved. But I wonder today if there's anybody in this building who would say, well, Preacher John, I've heard you talking about being saved. But I have to admit I'm not. I don't have that hope. I can't sing this morning, it is well with my soul. I can't lay down at night with that peace. I don't have that peace about my troubles being temporary. But I sure would love to have that peace. I sure would love to be able to sing that song with your head bowed right now. Not only can I say today as your pastor, I'm glad I'm saved, but I'd love for you to be able to say in the next couple of minutes, boy, I'm glad I'm saved too. And you'd say, Pastor John, I'm not saved right now, but I want him. With your head bowed and your eyes closed, would you say this right now? Pray with me, dear Jesus. I know that I have never asked you to be my Savior, but I believe you died for me. And I believe that I am a sinner. And I believe you had to die because of my sin. And Jesus, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the sin that I've committed. I'm 
I'm asking you to forgive me. I'm asking you to save me. I want to know it's well with my soul. So Lord Jesus, come in right now. Change my life. I want to be able to say like the preacher and the people are saying, I'm glad I'm saved. Save me now, Jesus. Now right now, if you prayed that, say thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving a sinner like me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying for me. Amen. We're going to sing right now. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says, if you did pray that prayer, don't be ashamed of it. Don't be ashamed. He said, confess him before others. Don't be ashamed of what he's just done for you. Say, folks, you might have been saved for 30 years, but have you really rejoiced in it lately? Take a minute this morning. Rejoice in your salvation. Maybe you want to come just thank him. Maybe you feel like, I just want to walk to the front this morning, get on my knees, and thank him for saving me. Well, let's just take time to do that. You can thank him where you stand. You can come to the altar. If you just ask Jesus to save you, I'd love for you to come down and tell me about it. Would you do that? Would you come and say, Pastor, I just prayed that prayer. I just prayed that prayer, and, and I asked Jesus to save me, and I want to rejoice with you. While we sing right now, won't you come? If you need to come, won't you come? We're going to sing, Jesus saves. That's how we're going to close. You all right with that? You remember where you was at? Y'all good? Uh, yeah, there you go. And I'm going to tell you, you're going to sing it till you smile. I went short. Now, how long you're here, that's up to you. My wife and I will be in the lobby. We'd love to meet you. If you're a first-time guest, we'd love to meet you, talk to you. We'll be right out here on this side of the building. Church, sing it out today. We've heard the joyful sound. Jesus saves. Are you glad you're saved? Amen. It's a lively hope. Wake up, good Baptist. thanks for being with us in worship today. It is our heart's desire that through the word and through this worship service today, God has spoken to your heart and you desire to serve him and to worship him more than you ever have in your life. You know, if you've been watching today and you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, that is our greatest desire. If we can be a help to you, if we can uh, assist you in any way, please contact us at the information you see on the screen. We also want to thank those of you who watch us regularly. We greatly appreciate your prayer and support. Keep praying for us as we pray for you as we serve the Lord together. <laughs>